I had John Gibbs and Scott Walter already on Zoom, and we had just finished an amazing video, which you need to see if you haven't already seen it, dealing with the series of videos that I did with Joe Justice. And as long as I had them in the room, they were already there. I said, couldn't we just go for 20 more minutes and talk a little bit about the other big subject of this month, the month of March 2022, three, whatever this is, will be remembered in, histo in history as the month when chat GPT became a thing. So John and Scott, Scott, glad to have you back. Um, and uh, this is Randy Kirk, by the way, this is Randy Kirk's channel, uh, like and subscribe and do all that stuff. I have to always say all that stuff. Anyway, John, you said that you had an amazing conversation with chat GPT. Today. I, I did. It was about theory of mind and uh, consciousness and different models of consciousness. And I actually learned a thing or two from, from chat GPT, which is impressive. And by the way, I have a blog that's on artimatic.io, A-R-T-I-M-A-T-I-C.io. And I'm going to release a blog of the transcript. It's about 3,500 words, um, you know, substantial amount of communication. And it's really interesting. So people can tune in. There's some other articles and things like that too. Um, but don't forget, this is not just chat GPT. This month we've talked about llama, Alpaca, uh, Bard, ChatGPT, Midjourney 5. That's five things I can think of just off the top of my head. Huge advances in AI and large language models and generative art models in just the last couple of weeks. It's have you crazy. been invited? Have you been invited to actually work on Bard yet? No, I, you know, I don't even think I've actually applied for that. I, I have applied a, on register, but I haven't heard from him yet. So I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah. I'm on the Bing test thing. So I'm using the chat GPT Bing search deal, um, yes. but I haven't done Bard yet. So yeah. <laughs> How about you, uh, Scott? Are you, uh, are you playing in the chat GPT world? And I've played with it a little bit. I mean, the first thing I wanted to do is see whether it had a sense of humor. <laughs> So I, I tried to ask it, you know, why this was funny or not funny and for it to write jokes. And it, it, I did a poll about a month or so ago where I, I had it write a joke that I'm trying to remember what, what the joke was, but it just wasn't funny. And I, I put the poll out there and no one thought it was funny. And then I asked ChatGPT, it's like, why didn't you think it was funny? And it went in this explanation, this long winded thing. It was like, well, you know, it's all comes out the taste and this and that. And I said, sometimes the answer is simple. It wasn't funny, you know, and it didn't quite understand because I'm getting this argument with this thing, trying to train it. And I'm realizing I'm not teaching it anything. It's not, it's not like I'm really giving it a lecture. It's going to completely ignore everything I gave it, but eventually it got a little bit better with some of the jokes. Yeah. But I want to point out that one thing I watched a channel called AI explained, and he has done a bard versus uh chat GPT oh. chat GPT has won at most things, but for humor bard won. He said oh, it was hmm. much funnier. It was much more able to tell jokes and stuff. If I'm remembering yeah. correctly, I hope I have that right. Somebody's yeah. going to go like, no, it wasn't. Chat GPT was funnier. Anyway, that's, I think that's that was so, one so, of the wins that he gave to Bard, though. That is so funny. You know, they say that uh, the, when you're learning a foreign language, um, that, that, mm -hmm. that you know that you are doing well when you get the jokes in the foreign language. Right. That's one of the keys. And it's so interesting because yesterday, well, I've got one of my clients is a CPA and I want to do this series of YouTube videos with her where she's the CPA and I'm the dumb business owner. And I'm asking questions, these dumb questions, and she's giving me, you know, bright answers. And she's done this before in, in, uh, in, in, in-person situations where this exchange takes place and she does it, does it and it's funny. I asked GPT for some some dialogue that might work and gave it the circumstance and it gave me great dialogue. The dialogue was on point um, and it was, you know, useful for the, the purpose it was, but it wasn't, there wasn't a, a and I said, humorous. And, I, and then I said, could you make it funnier? <laughs> you know, and it just <laughs> couldn't do it. There was no humor at all in it. So, so one of the things, do either of you have access to the Bing uh developer version or not oh the development uh, version i don't think so. no no okay so they they have they have a, a whole sidebar in the browser and you can choose to have it be professional balanced 
I think one other option and humorous. So it is one of the options is actually humorous. Oh. So you could have it talk about, I don't know, you know, stellar phenomena, but make it humorous or something. Right. And it will, it, it's, it's more or less successful, but it does try to, to take a more humorous bent on it. So interesting. So interesting. Well, so John, I think I'm not sure it was you, somebody put together a video in the last couple of days, which kind of also blew my mind and it might've been you. And you talked about the training of chat GPT by a oh, new, yeah. the, the idea that the AI is now training itself. Yes, that was, yes. That was you. That was about alpaca. So, okay. So alpaca of course is similar to a llama. Um, and, and what they used was, so this is Stanford university researchers. They took an open source, um, seven, 6.7 7 billion parameter model of llama, which is made by, um, uh, uh, by Meta, sorry, Facebook. I always think, I always think Facebook Meta anyway, but it's made by, by Meta. And they took that and they used, they, they gave chat GPT 3.5, some instructions on how to create training prompts for this model. And then they trained the model. And the deal is that they, you know, looking at training chat GPT 3.5 was somewhere on the, oh gosh, was it $10 million or 10, 100 million? It was very expensive, right? They did this for 600 bucks of computer time. So, I mean, we're looking, and then the guy, the guy who was like talking about it said, look, you know, if you look at ARK Invest's prediction, that's 2030 when it's supposed to get to $600. And it's already done in 2023. So it's happened seven years in advance of when, and ARK Invest, everybody thinks is crazy. They're like, oh, these people are nuts. They're like way too optimistic. And here you have this thing happening in such a radically shorter time that it's just kind of mind blowing. But the thing that blew my mind was if you go back to the, the, the best chess playing programs, and then especially with the best go playing the little uh, game, you know, with the white and black uh, rocks, that the way that they got the thing to be super, super human after a, a very expensively and arduously training this manually was they let it play itself. And then it just went, and now people don't even understand how it plays anymore because it's so good. So we don't even come. And so what I was saying was forget about the expense. Once you can take this and create a virtuous cycle where you have one model that trains another, and then that model can then go in and train another. And then, <laughs> and they can keep looping like that. This thing could learn to be, I don't even know. I, that's what I was saying in my video. I was like, I don't even know what the output of that is. What does it mean to be superhuman language? <laughs> like, so, 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 okay. So when you were doing that, okay. I've been a marketer my whole life. That's what I've done. That's what I love. And what you do in marketing is uh, what we do with YouTube videos. You know, you got to come up with a headline and then you got to come up with bullet points, right? Right. Um, that's what it's like half my life. I've been creating headlines and bullet points. So um, I thought to myself, okay, so I asked ChatGPT to give me a headline and some bullet points on one of my products that I that I sell on Amazon right now. And it did a it did an okay job, but it was very plain vanilla. Yeah. Um, so I'm guessing that it would be partially the content that it has to draw from. Um, but then the training part of it, I'm wondering, would that be looking at millions of other headlines and bullet sets to see order, to see well, design mm -hmm. of the bullet, the way the bullets are, because bullets, we do bullets differently on Amazon books than we do on Amazon products, believe it or right. not. The keywords right. are different on Amazon books than right. they are on Amazon products. So is it a matter of it going in, because those algorithms exist. Right. Ask it to think? do verse. Ask it to do verse. To do verse. Verse. One of uh, the co-founders of Visual Components, when he was playing around with it, he just asked it. First, we didn't even know if it would knew that we existed. We're not that big a company. And with all those parameters, it probably is like heard of us, but doesn't really know anything about us. He asked it to write a uh, verse in the spirit of um, a Shakespearean sonnet about Visual Components. <laughs> And it was solid on. We could not believe it. I mean, we were going through it's like every single point. And not only that, it's like, why aren't our marketing people <laughs> doing it? Did a much better job than marketing. I mean, at this point, we're like, we got to post this thing. This describes our company better than ever. 
Yeah. Oh, so imagine if you were a big company where really new information about you. Right. So, so, so what Scott is saying is exactly right. So again, these language models, every neural network model is always going to regress to the mean. You're, you're trying to average mm -hmm. out all of these 174 mm -hmm. billion little teeny knobs so that you get an average answer every single time, which means you're going to get a lot of generic plain vanilla stuff. The way around it that I found, which just like what Scott is saying is, say, write this in the style of Thomas Pynchon or mm -hmm. write it in the style of William Faulkner or write mm -hmm. it in the style of of. James Joyce. And it gets wild when you do that because these are, I picked those three writers because I've actually asked before. And, you know, Faulkner, it'll write like one gigantic sentence that's like top to bottom of the page, you know, because it's Faulkner. So, so, but it's absolutely, if you tell it to write in the style of something, it does a much better job than just telling it to, it'll give you a good answer, but it'll be yeah. plain vanilla. Yeah. But if you say yeah. do it like somebody, then you're like, Ooh, now it's, now it's really rocking. The, the, the other thing to be careful is John saying it, it always goes to the mean and mm. okay. Back me up here, John, because we had this discussion. Our feeling is that <laughs> these models, they are statistics machines. They're, they're kind of predicting what should be in there. They are not reasoning. No, okay? not at all. They are not coming to conclusions of anything. So a lot of times when you ask it for a recommendation, you know, a lot of times they'll say, oh, I'm an AI, I can't do it. And you'll say, I want a stock pick, I want a stock pick. And eventually when you get it to do it, it does it because it's more crowdsourced. That's what the internet says. It's not because the super intelligence went through there and really analyzed everything and says, no, this is what it should be. So you have to be very, very careful. And John and I were trying to find an example <laughs> of that because we feel that if you have a training set out there, where enough people are saying the sky is green. And despite the fact there might be like scientific papers and everything else there, it's reading that says, no, the sky is blue because it could get so overwhelmed with that fact. It's possible if you ask it, what color is the sky? It will come out and say green and not because it did an analysis. It would might say, I don't care what all these people are saying this paper. I know physics, everything else. The sky is blue. All this other stuff is rubbish. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be a little bit careful on that. Right. They are not conscious beings. Right. And it, I wrote like a little verse back in the summertime called Do Tesla's Dream. It's pinned on my my Twitter page. You can go ahead and read it. It's a long thread, so don't stop at the first one and go through and you'll kind of come up with my conclusion on what is going on and whether AI is conscious, whether our FSD computers there. I got a shout on there for 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 John in there. So you got to go through there and find that Easter egg. So <laughs> definitely go ahead and, and do it. Bottom line is they are not conscious. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and Randy, I think uh, to point to another video that I'm a big fan of computer file, which is a, a British, uh, I think it's university of Manchester anyway. Um, but they, they do, uh, they did, a, they do a bunch of things and they had just had one that came out this morning about glitches in GPT and they're fascinating. So, and I'm trying to remember one of them. It was like golden Pokemon or something, just random stuff like that. Random words that you're like, this means nothing or just a string of characters. And the thing will just go off. It, it'll just be completely confused and, and just have like answers that make no sense. Well, it turns out that like one of the people or a couple of these instances were actually the usernames of Reddit users who are extremely active on Reddit. And so their, 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 their username kept appearing over and over and over and over and over again. But then what they're theorizing is that what they did eventually is they said, oh, this is a stupid Reddit thread because one of them is a counting thread where literally somebody started with the number one and now they're up to billions and everybody just adds. So this person just kept writing the next number. So they said they think that eventually what they did was they took that and they scraped that data. They said, oh, this is dumb data. This is not helpful. But that person's username became a token. It became one of the words in its language, but it's just sitting there and it has no context anymore. So it just, it exists, but, and so if you type it in, it just goes nuts because it doesn't have anything to connect it to. And so it's very, very cool how unconscious this stuff is, how, how you can break, you know, you can't break a human being by going like golden Pokemon. You're like, ah, you know, but with, but with, and it wasn't that it was golden something. I'm talking, it was a variety of Pokemon, but anyway, you know, but you can totally break it just by giving it like a code word. <laughs> so, just so, so another one that I've been confused by, because again, I've only been using chat GPT, to be honest, I haven't tried any of the other ones yet. And, and 
so maybe this will be helpful to some folks that are listening today. So ChatGPT is not hooked up to the internet. No. Um, so, and I guess they're feeding it more and more information all the time. And maybe some of that is from the internet, but they're, they specifically say they're not hooked up to the internet. So if I'm doing research about something that happened yesterday or happened this month, chat GPT is useless. I mean, it, 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 even stuff that I'm doing, even research that I'm doing that might be for this quarter, um, is still not uh, giving me any kind of uh, data. So is, are any of the uh, systems currently hooked up to the, no, to the yeah. internet? And Bing, giving... chat, Bing chat, right, John? B Bing chat and, and also BARD. BARD is also oh. connected up to the internet. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing about, this is really interesting because Bing is using the same technology as ChatGPT, but it's very different. Um, and so what I've found is it's very difficult to get Bing to give you long, effusive answers and very difficult to make ChatGPT not give you long. <laughs> So, so this is my little trick here and I'm giving people a little secret. What I'll do is for something recent, like let's say a breaking story, I don't know, there's an, an accident where somebody said Tesla was responsible okay. for like full self-driving, whatever. So you can go, can you please do a summary about this article, you know, and then you can give it the article too, and it'll read the article for you and summarize it. And you can do that with ChatGPT as well. But you can say, you know, maybe there's 10 articles about it. And you say, like, give me a summary about this news art news thing. And it'll give you something that's like two or three paragraphs long. Then you take that and you feed it into ChatGPT and you say, you know, expand this, make this bigger, make this into a 10 paragraph article or something. And it will just do it. <laughs> and uh, at that point, it because it's basing it on this summary, it seems to have a pretty good understanding of what's going on. Okay, and maybe this will be useless to anybody out there, which is why I can't get this data anyway. So I go into a regular search on Google yesterday, trying to find out who are the top 50 companies in the United States in or in the world of the United States. I didn't care which uh, in terms of their net cash. So their total cash on hand, less debt. I couldn't I couldn't get that off of Google. I couldn't get that. Off, I couldn't not nothing was giving me that list. So then I went into chat GPT and of course it said, sorry, you know, we don't do, we, we can't give you current data. So how would you, is, is there some thought as to how you would address that on the combination of resources currently available? I was just thinking, I don't have, uh, I don't have it open on this computer right now. Cause I was like, I'd just try it for you if I like oh, I with, with Bing, it does have access. Okay. All right. So it yeah. should be able to find that knowledge. But the problem is, I don't know how much smarter it is than than you are. And I'm not saying anything you as a human being, not you, it, yeah. Randy Kirk, because if you can't Google it and find it, I don't know how it effective it's going to be able to be at finding it. Well, except so. it can go 20, it can go 30 pages. It can go, you know, most of us stop. I certainly stop after right. one or two pages deep. You know, good right. researchers go at least two pages. Lousy researchers go down to the first five. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. but so, but with Bing, it could go a hundred pages deep if it was looking for the data, and it, it, so that might be one way, huh? Yeah, that could be a possibility. All right, well, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So, all right, what? So, I would say my theory is is that what we're really looking at is better writing. I don't know what it's going to do besides better research and better writing um, unless it actually starts to reach conclusions. So at least based on what you're saying, John, a better stylistically, um, better, more persuasive, because we can use yeah. somebody who's really persuasive as our, as our, as the make it like this guy, make it the way he does it. Uh, right. Better, better in terms of uh, following the algo of the system that we're trying to write it for. Um, but I don't until it can reason. I don't know that we get um, leaps of faith, so to speak, or creative ideas. Yeah. Here's yeah. the point: the, the whole idea is to get, get some sort of insight into the problem that you have. And if you ask it just to give you pros, you're probably not going to get the insight. The thing about verse is it's always subject to interpretation and there's taking some poetic license along the way. And so that's what happened with like with this verse we went through there and I noticed a couple of connections it made that were just kind of brilliant. And if you interpret the right way, you begin to realize like, oh yeah, 
Exactly. And that's the bullet point we've been missing. We were never able to phrase yeah. it quite that way. Yeah. That's why I would say try the verse because I, what that will do is it'll, it'll expand the horizon of what you're right. thinking about and you will get the insights that you're missing. That's why humor is so good. And that's why verse is so good is because it literally allows you to think outside the box and see things that you did not understand. <laughs> so I just I just asked Bing that question of yours. I said, oh. what are the 10 biggest companies with cash on hand minus debt? I couldn't remember the exact way you phrased it. And it came back with an answer. It said Microsoft, Berkshire, Hathaway, Alphabet, and Apple are sitting on more than $100 billion of cash. Uh, nine companies in the S&P 500 uh, each hold net cash of $5 billion a piece or much more. So on net cash. There you go. It said, okay, so together these companies hold a total of $325 billion free and clear after subtracting total debt for the company. Nice. So I, I can't hope it's not an SVB. That's right, but that's the answer. <laughs> so that seems like a pretty reasonable answer. It 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 does a weird thing where it says searching, searching, searching. Like it looks like it's looking on the internet oh, yeah. and then it provides an answer. Nice. So, and, and what does it mean by net cash? Because five billion seems pretty small for those companies. Well, it said, uh, and up. It said and yeah. up. It says yeah, five yeah, billion still, or much more. Yeah, but still, that's 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 peanuts because they didn't mention Tesla, and Tesla is already sitting on twenty. So well, I don't right, know how yeah. much do they think of cash or cash equivalents, or were they, are they really talking cash? Yeah, yeah. Well, then that 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 would just allow you to do a deeper search. But the, the ability was the problem. And mm -hmm. great, thank you. If I if I didn't get anything else <laughs> out of this last twenty minutes, I now have. Two or three new ways to search. Oh, what, what, there we go. What, what, and yeah. actually, here we go. I, I didn't read the last sentence. It actually says the company with the most cash on hand in the world is Goldman Sachs with uh, cash and equivalents of $241 billion, followed by Daiwa Securities Group and Morgan Stanley. So banks, of course it's banks. <laughs> Wait a minute, is it their cash? Yeah, or is it yeah, the yeah. I mean, is that, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Is it that my <laughs> cash? <laughs> <laughs> well, as always, again, John, Scott, so glad to have you on board. Um, really fun uh, conversation, useful conversation. I think people that watch this will get stuff that they can take away and use this afternoon. And uh, listen, uh, be sure to uh, go over and subscribe to John's channel. Be sure to go over and and follow both John and Scott on Twitter and me too. <laughs> and then there's also Patreon. You know, John has a Patreon. I have a Patreon. Scott, have you got a Patreon yet? No, 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 no. Not no, yet, I, huh? I, okay. no I'm right. not that serious a YouTuber. I find it's easier to kind of crash the party every now and then. So <laughs> I, I like sleeping on John's sofa, you know. I think so. You you become you become like the we're gonna have to start an Airbnb for Scott here. <laughs> <laughs> Your time may come, Scott. Who knows? Yeah. All right. This has been Randy Kirk. It's too much work. <laughs> it's been great talking to you. Click the link below to get your paperback, Kindle, or audiobook now.